I hope you guys are ready for some really bad Mandarin and simping over Imperial Empresses because that's what this video is. Xiao Xian Chun, also known as Lady Fu Chia, is one of my favourite Empresses in Chinese history. It also doesn't hurt that she's portrayed by the gorgeous Qin Lan in Story of Yangshi Palace. And yes, for the two people that are asking, the third part of Story of Yangshi Palace Deep Dive will be out soon. And soon I mean by the end of this year. Maybe. Give me a break, okay? Every single episode is an hour long, and in a lot of C dramas, there isn't such a thing as a filler episode. Everything is pertinent, and therefore I must cover everything. God, is this how Mike's Mike felt when he did his Pretty Little Liars deep dive? The historical figure Lady Fucha has been portrayed in many different forms of media, the most recent being Story of Yangshi Palace 2018 and Ru Yi's Royal Love in the Palace also in 2018. However, Story of Yangshi Palace has the more accurate portrayal of the real life figure. In the latter media, she's seen as somewhat antagonistic, whereas the Story of Yangshi Palace version has a much more realistic interpretation of her. Lady Fucha was born to the Fucha clan, a Manchu family belonging to the bordered Yellow Banner Army, 28th of March, 1712, Year of the Dragon. Like the majority of Chinese women in history, her personal name, known as her first name in the West, was not recorded. Her father, Li Rongbao, was a third rank military official and a first class duke. Her mother was known as Lady Jiro, Lady Fucha had seven elder brothers, two younger brothers, and a younger sister, which, let's be fair, in ancient China is standard. When she was 16, she participated in the consort selection. The emperor at the time, Emperor Yongjun, the third emperor of the Qing dynasty, chose her to be the primary consort for his fourth son, Hongli, also 16. Hongli was a favored son to his father, being a prince of the first rank, and while Emperor Yongjun did not proclaim any of his son's crown prince, many officials believed in his heart he had chosen Hong Li. Lady Fuchia married Hong Li on the 3rd of September 1727, and he gave her Changcheng Gong, the Palace of Eternal Spring, in the western sector of the Forbidden Palace. On the 3rd of November 1728, Lady Fuchia gave birth to Hong Li's first daughter. Sadly, the little princess would not reach her second birthday, dying prematurely on the 14th of February, 1730. She then gave birth to his second son, Yonglian, the crown prince of Duanhui, 9th of August later that year. Things would change for the young primary consort on the 8th of October, 1735, when the Yongjian Emperor died and was succeeded by Hongli, whose title was now the Qianlong Emperor. She was installed as Empress on the 23rd of January, 1738, at only 26 years old. Tragedy would, however, strike again when 10 months later, the 23rd of November, an eight-year-old Yonglian died of smallpox. While Lady Fucha took her duties as Empress seriously, remaining strong in court, her son's death stayed with her for many years. Her mother-in-law, Empress Dowager Chongqing, mentioned once that the Empress's eyes often looked sad. She gave birth to her third child and Hongli's third daughter, Empress He Jing of the first rank on July 31st, 1731. The Empress was seen as virtually perfect, known to be respected, virtuous and frugal. She disliked spending money for her own good. Instead of wearing expensive jewelry, she'd wear artificial flowers in her hair. Lady Fucha also was very pious. As head of the harem, she was in charge of overseeing Confucian rituals, and she became the first empress of the Qing dynasty to personally lead women to perform the sericultural rite, the rite revolving around the cultivation of silkworms to produce silk. Hong Li adored his empress and favored her above all of his consorts. He gave her sons the highest of ranks, Crown Prince and Prince of the First Rank, as well as giving her surviving daughter the highest rank of Princess of the First Rank. He wrote a poem where he praised her grace and beauty, both outside and in, and once said, not seeing the Empress for one day is like not seeing her for three months. Happily enough, the feelings were mutual. Whenever the Emperor was sick, the Empress would sit by his side and refuse to leave until he was better. Lady Fuchia accompanied him to recite poems, paint, go boating, and play the Zetha. She was his closest confidant who listened patiently and advised him as best she could. 27th of May, 1746, she gave birth to the emperor's seventh son, Yong Song. 
Prince Jia of the first rank. Alas, like her first two children, he too died at 18 months old on the 29th of January, 1748. Following Yong Song's death, she became heartbroken once more, leaving her depressed and with deteriorating health. The Empress became seriously ill, and less than three months after Yong Song, she too died during one of the Emperor's southern tours on the 8th of April. Before her death on the tour, she watched fish swimming in the river and sighed with sadness, and said, I am not a fish, but I would like to know how happy the fish is. She was succeeded by her only living child, Princess He Jing of the first rank. The Qianlong Emperor did not take the loss well. Despite Lady Fu Che's minimalistic ways, the funeral was lavish. And when he discovered two of his sons, Yong Huan, Prince Din An of the first rank, born to consort Zhe Min, and Yong Jian, Prince Shun of the second rank, born to noble consort Chun Hui, did not mourn the Empress's death, he forbid them from ever taking the throne after his death. Just instant, never, ever will you be crown prince. He would often sit in the throne room and talk as if the Empress was still there. He would make remarks such as, our daughter is growing up, and our daughter is getting married today, referring to their shared daughter, Princess He Jing of the first rank. And by God was Princess He Jing adored as the Emperor's child of his favourite consort. She was married to a pretty high up Mongolian prince and her dowry was the equivalent of 14,800 pounds in today's money. Oh, and after marriage, her annual allowance was 267,000 pounds in today's money. The Emperor ordered that all of the Empress's possessions be maintained in their original positions for 40 years. He visited her grave every year and wrote many poems in memory of her. When he was 80 years old, he came to her grave to pay homage, and he wrote, Every autumn, I can't help but cry when I pay homage to you. I am aging, and I don't wish to live till a hundred year old. It is comforting to know that we will be reunited in less than 20 years. Every time a significant event happened, he would also go to visit the grave and talk to the Empress. They were married for 22 years, and after her death, he continued to love her for another 51 years, until his own death. I hope it was interesting to hear about the historical figures that inspired certain characters. I might branch out out of sea dramas and do other figures that inspired characters if you guys would enjoy that. I hope this was interesting and you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.